Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. This is the last and final video on the problems of income, computation of income from house property. So already till the last video I have completed 12 problems on how to compute the income from house property according to the provisions of Income Tax Act 1961. Two types of houses are there, let out house and self-occupied house. So far we have done the problems on let out houses. But in this last video, I am going to explain you four problems on self-occupied house. How to compute the income from self-occupied house. So before starting the problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take a printout, always keep it ready. Take a screenshot of the solutions of the last four problems, then I'll explain all the points. See the 13th problem. Problem number 13. Sri Venkat Reddy purchased a house in Kaki Nada in the year 1997 and using for residential purpose. So this line says that he has not let out the house. The SSC is using the house for his own occupation, self-residence. During the previous year relevant to the current assessment year, the following particulars are furnished. Compute income from house property. Municipal rental value MRV 25,000. Rent of similar buildings as FRV 30,000. Expenses paid for municipal taxes 2,500. Non-agricultural land tax 1,000. Repairs 2,800. Insurance 500. And interest paid on loan taken to purchase the house 38,000. Now see here. First of all, the new point in this problem is it's a self-occupied house. In theory video, I have already explained you the net annual value of self-occupied house will always be nil. NAV will be nil. When NAV is nil, so we are not concerned about GAV and municipal taxes because Income Tax Act says net annual value of self-occupied house is nil. So we are not concerned about municipal rental value, fair rental value, right? And we are not concerned about municipal taxes. So in the problem, MRV is given, ignore. FRV is given, ignore. Municipal taxes given, ignore. Net annual value will be nil. No deductions are allowed under section 24 except one deduction. That is interest paid on loan taken to purchase the house, to construct the house, to repair the house, to renovate the house or to reconstruct the house. If interest is paid on loan taken for this, that will be allowed as deduction. So in our problem, he has purchased the house in 1997. 1997 means before 1999. Income Tax Act says if the house is purchased before 1-4-1999, Deduction, interest on loan deduction will be given to the least of the following two. Actual interest paid or fixed amount of ceiling, 30,000. If the house is purchased before 1499, then the ceiling amount is fixed at 30,000, not more than 30,000. In our problem, actual interest paid is 38,000, but the limit is 30,000. So only 30,000 will be allowed. Solution will be like this. Sri Venkat Reddy, computation of income from house property is self-occupied. Net annual value nil. Always, we should not take gross annual value. We should start from NAV, net annual value nil. Deduction under section 24, only one deduction. Interest on loan taken to purchase the house under section 24B. So how to calculate here? The NAV of self-occupied house is nil. This is the first problem. That's why I have written all the details. The net annual value of self-occupied house is nil. No deductions are given allowed under section 24 except interest on loan taken to purchase, construct, repair, renovate or reconstruct the property. The loan taken to purchase the house was taken before 1-4-1999 because it is given in the problem 1997. So before 1-4-1999. So deduction is allowed to the least of the following two amounts. That is actual interest paid 38,000 given in the problem and fixed ceiling amount given by Income Tax Act 30,000, whichever is lower, 30,000 is lower, so 30,000 will be allowed. So 0, 
minus 30,000, you will get negative. 0, nil is 0. 0 minus 30,000 is minus 30,000. The loss from self-occupied house, 30,000. That's it. And if the house is purchased before 1-4-1999, the ceiling is 30,000. If the house is purchased after 1999, then the ceiling limit is 2 lakh. Ceiling limit is 2 lakh. If the house is purchased or constructed, purchased or constructed, if the loan is taken for repair, renovation or reconstruction, the ceiling limit is 30,000, whether before or after 1-4-1999. That's it. So this is the end of problem number 13. 14th one. Sri Arunachalam purchased a house in Pune on 1-7-2010. So he is using the house completely for his residential purpose, self-occupied, just like the previous problem. The fair rental value of 1 lakh rupees ignore, while the municipal rental value 80,000 ignore. During the previous year, he has paid municipal taxes ignore, land revenue ignore, interest on loan taken to purchase the house 1 lakh 50,500. Compute his income from house property, just like the previous problem. But the different point is here the house was purchased after 1 for 1999. After 1 4, because 2010 it is given. The house is purchased in 2010. That means if the house is purchased after 1 4, 1999, the ceiling amount is 2 lakh. That is the only difference. 30,000 before 1 4, 1999, and 2 lakh rupees ceiling amount after 1 4, 1999. So, Sri Arunachalam, combination of income from house property, self occupied. Net annual value, nil. Now deductions, interest on loan taken to purchase the house, here in working note. Since the loan is taken to purchase the house after 1-4-1999, so deduction under section 24b is least of the following. Actual interest paid 1,50,500 given in the problem. And fixed ceiling amount is 2 lakh. The least is 1,50,500 is the lower and that amount is allowed. So 0 minus 1,50,500 is minus 1,50,000 loss from self-occupied house. In working note, in examination, you should write for self-occupied house, the net annual value will be nil. We are not concerned about GAV. So we don't require municipal rental value, fair rental value or municipal taxes. Not allowed. Similarly, in our problem, repairs are given and land revenue is given, agricultural land tax is given. All these are not allowed as deduction. So in working note, you should write on. No deductions are allowed. Next, 15. Sri Srikant owns a house at Jaipur. Municipal value is 65,000 MRV and fair rental value FRV 78,000. During the previous year, the house is used for residential purpose, self-occupied, self-occupied. So NAV is nil. We are not concerned with FRV or MRV, ignore MRV, FRV. During the previous year, the house is mortgaged with the bank for a loan of 5 lakh rupees at 15% interest to renovate the house. So during the current year, the SSC has taken a loan from bank to renovate the house. So interest paid on that loan, which is taken to renovate the house, will be allowed as deduction. But the limit is 30,000. If the loan is taken for repairs or renovation or reconstruction, the ceiling amount is 30,000, whether the uh, loan is taken before 1499 or after 1499. Compute income from house property for the current assessment here. That's it. Previous two problems, the loan was taken for purchase, but the third problem, the loan is taken to renovate. The so ceiling amount is 30,000, that's all. So here, yeah, Sri Sri Khan, competition of income from house property, self-occupied, annual value. NAV is nil for self-occupied. Deduction, interest on loan taken to renovate the house. So here. Yeah, Interest on loan taken to repair or renovate the house before or after 1499 is allowed as reduction under section 24b to the least of the following two amounts. Whether the loan is taken before 1499 or after 1499, provision is same. If the loan is taken 
for repair or renovation or reconstruction. What are the two amounts? Actual interest paid in the problem it is given 5 lakh rupees loan is taken, interest is 15%. So 15% of 5 lakh comes to 75,000. Second, fixed ceiling, ceiling amount is 30,000. Whichever is less, so 30,000 is less. So deduction under section 24B is 30,000. So 0 minus 30,000 is minus 30,000. Loss from self-occupied house. That's it. The last and final problem is 16th one. Sri Uma Maheshwar Rao on 1st June 2020. Actually our previous year begins from 1st April 2020. But he has taken the loan. Uh, he has purchased the house on 1st June 2020. He purchased a flat in Sri Satya Sai residential complex for his residence for 38 lakh. That means flat is purchased for self-occupation. Self-occupied. 38 lakh is the cost of the flat. He availed a housing loan from ICICI Bank, rupees 24 lakh at 14% interest. Loan is taken to purchase the house. So interest on loan will be allowed. So 14% of 24 lakh. But we have to calculate for how many months the loan is taken on 1st June. So June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. 10 months. 10 months interest we have to calculate. Computed income from house property for the current assessment year. That's it. So ceiling amount is 2 lakh. Because the loan is taken after 1 for 1999. And the loan is taken to purchase the house. So ceiling amount 2 lakh. Now, Sri Uma Maheshwar Rao, computation of income from house property for the assessment year self-occupied. Net annual value nil. Deduction under section, interest on loan taken to purchase the house. In working. Interest on loan taken to purchase the house after 1499 is allowed as reduction to the least of the following. Actual interest paid. So 14% is the rate of interest. The loan amount is 24 lakh. So 14% of 24 lakh into 10 by 12. Because 12 months are there. 1st June it is taken. So 1st June 2020 to 31st March 2021. It comes to 10 months. So 10 by 12. It comes to 2,80,000. Actual interest paid 2,80,000. Then fixed ceiling amount is 2 lakh. Whichever is less. So 2 lakh is less. So deduction under section 24B is 2 lakh. Now. Loan is taken on 1-6-2-2020, so interest is charged for 10 months, that is from 1-6-2020 to 31st March 2021. Here 20, 2 lakh. So 0 minus 2 lakh is minus 2 lakh, loss from self-occupied house, that's it. So this is the end, 16 problems. Totally income from house property, 16 problems I have solved. See here, one of the comments just now I have seen on my uh, videos. One student has asked me, Sir, you are giving so many videos. Just to tell me which video is important from examination point of view. Wow. What a question. If I know that this only problem will be asked in the examination, then I would have prepared only one video. Why I have prepared so many videos? It's a logical thinking. See here, Income Tax Act is not so easy. And in examination, we can't say which type of problem will be asked. So I'm making the videos for your knowledge, not simply to go and write the examination pass and get the degree. That's it. It needs your efforts. It needs your patience. It needs your urge to learn something, to acquire the knowledge. So until and unless you have the complete command on all the provisions, it's difficult to pass the examination and you will not get the knowledge also. So my suggestion, watch all the videos. Have some interest. Don't just uh, to, for the sake of formality, I want to study this because I want to pass the examination. In that case, nobody can help. That is not the contention of, the, of a student. So you must see all the videos. Then only you will be in a, confidently you can write the examination. Let the examiner ask any type of questions. I am perfect in all the provisions. I will answer. This type of attitude you can get only after watching all the videos. Right? 
So we have completed two heads that is income from salary, income from house property. Still we have to do profits and gains of business and profession, capital gain and other, other sources. Inshallah we will continue the next topic in the next video.